Blade and Sorcery has still got it. Despite nearing its third year in early access, Precious few VR games have been able to emulate the sandbox lunacy of its ludicrously enjoyable combat. Where else can you ride a zipline with an axe, barrel into a crowd of dumbfounded enemy combatants, and then proceed to kick, slice and fireball your way to victory? The inevitable Oculus Quest version of the game, Blade and Sorcery Nomad, still has that bloody magic intact. But even releasing as a full product for the first time on the Oculus Store, it's clear that Warprog's ode to slapstick slaughter is still a ways from feeling finished. If you've played Gorn, Boneworks or any other physics driven VR combat game, you'll probably know what to expect here. Blade and Sorcery is essentially an extended experiment, searching for more convincing and compelling VR sword fighting. So rather than frantically waggling your hand around in hopes of success, you need to put real effort and precision into your attacks. Sword swipe didn't land how you wanted? Then do it once more with feeling. The game simulates the weight of a weapon in an elasticated way, like if you tried to steady your wrist as you pick up a brick with one hand. So a two-handed claymore can't be weightlessly waved about, you have to play your part in holding it. As with similar games, this takes a while to get used to, and as a result, Nomad definitely shouldn't be your first VR experience. Think of it as something more to graduate to once you've warmed up with a few rounds of super hot. Once you have grown accustomed to the initial strangeness, the real fun can begin. Blade and Sorcery's combat is, in a word, lethal. Swords can pierce right through enemies with unnerving ease, hatchets have a gruesome knack for embedding themselves in skulls, and magical abilities help augment the carnage in new and often hilarious ways. It's difficult to overstate just how entertaining all of this can be, from dangling opponents from the ankle and then tossing them over the side of a bridge, to unintentionally decapitating someone and ending up with their head stuck to the end of your sword. This definitely pushes the boundaries of VR violence, and it's certainly not for the faint of heart, but the dead-eyed, mannequin-like enemies keep you grounded in the humour of it all. Unwieldy as the combat can be, it's not just a free-for-all. Well, not quite at least. Magic attacks let you imbue weapons with new abilities, so a fireball can heat up a blade and penetrate armour, for example, while lightning will make even a slap of the flat side of a sword deal damage. Nevertheless, the game can be unavoidably messy, with enemies jumping straight into the camera and collision mishaps that would send my sword flying off. Oh, and good luck rolling the dice on the instant death platforming sections. Sometimes it's all part of the fun, sometimes, mainly late into a survival or dungeon run, it's pretty frustrating. This is also the first Oculus 2 game I've noticed to have several performance hitches, mainly in the form of occasional stutters in larger environments with more enemies. With that said, the game is definitely a real technical achievement on Quest 2, with some massive areas that stand their ground as you engage in incredibly complex combat. Granted, it's taken a significant hit in the visuals department, but it's pretty clear to see why this needed to be a Quest 2 exclusive. Currently, Blade and Sorcery is split into two modes, arena-based battling via sandbox and wave-based survival modes, or the new dungeon mode, which introduces a welcome touch of campaign-esque direction through randomised linear levels. The later mode is a step in the right direction, giving the game some sense of structure beyond a glorified tech demo, and challenging you to reach the end of a dungeon run is what kept me coming back. But it's also true that Blade and Sorcery is in desperate need of more of, well, everything. That goes to simple things like dungeon environments and weapons, but it also runs deeper than that. The current version is almost feature complete with PCs, save for an arena map and some dungeon rooms. But even with the addition of the dungeons mode, both versions of the game are awaiting a progression mode that unlocks loot and other things set to arrive in 2022. Without this feature, the current version of the game feels more like a toy box that's fun to play around with, but doesn't have many reasons to keep you coming back for long. I'd even suggest waiting for the progression mode so that you haven't seen most of what the game has to offer by the time it finally rolls around. Blade and Sorcery Nomad captures the best in class physics driven combat of the PC version of the game and successfully distills it for Quest. It's a messy, lethal playground with endlessly entertaining results that you simply couldn't get outside of VR. But it's also true that Nomad, along with the PC VR version, is still two or three updates away from really escaping its tech demo roots. And what's here now really feels like more of a preview, both for what the finished product will look like and what other developers could and should do with this groundwork. You'll have heaps of fun slicing your way through Blade and Sorcery, but its best days are yet to come. Thanks so much for watching this review. If you liked it, make sure to like, subscribe and comment, hit the notifications button, and we'll see you soon for more VR coverage.